Hey everybody, this is Katie of Katie's Creature Care, and today we're going to be doing a profile on columnaris and fish. So um, I reviewed like four or five different sources, including the super beefy 17-page scientific article, which I did for you guys. I thought I was done with this when I was in college. Um, but I'm going to be just reviewing the all these different articles and just giving you guys a snapshot of what they all talked about. So um, we're going to talk about what is columnaris, we're going to talk about how to ID it, how to treat it, and how to prevent it. Um, so this is a really hard disease to diagnose, which is why I have gotten multiple requests uh, about to do this video. And once you get it, it often will wipe out your whole tank unchecked. So. Um, let's talk about what it is. It is a bacteria naturally found in aquatic environments and it also thrives at higher temperatures. So in some of my articles I read, um, they talked about this can really impact fisheries. So a lot of the resources, the scientific resources were about how to lessen the impact of columnaris in fisheries, but it is still a good take home for uh, the, aqu the aquarium hobby as well. And they mentioned the aquarium hobby in those articles. So, um, how to ID it. This is so you should be looking at your fish every day. I highly re recommend it because a lot of times you can catch diseases early if you see them. So, um, unfortunately, there are multiple strains of this bacteria, and it some of the strains do not have any visible signs on the outside of the fish, it's only internal. So, unfortunately, you know. You should be checking, maybe behavioral, gasping, um, you know, and if you see any of that, quarantine the fish, treat it with meds. Um, but the visible one, the visible strains will be showing bloat, fin rot, um, and uh, the disease often enters through the gills. So, and it causes necrotic gill tissue, which means just dying gill tissue. So where it should be a really healthy pink, you will see it will be brown. So, and this is often, if you have a fish that you're bringing from the store, the gills is where that bacteria comes from and it will spread to your tank. So if you can see the gills, which are maybe a tetra, it may be really hard, but on a goldfish, since they're bigger, they may be easier. You're looking for brown, pale tissue that does not look like it's really healthy and it reduces the uh, surface area of the lamellae on the gills so they can't get oxygen as well so that's why it's so detrimental um, so those are the things the other th the other thing that I wanted to talk about kind of in how to idea is that it will form these really like cottony um, structures around the wounds or on the body and it looks like a fungus but it's not it is that it is that is the actual bacteria like stringing and it is that is the columns that it makes for columnaris flavobacterium columnaris is the scientific name so it can often be misdiagnosed as fungus so um, we're going to talk about how to treat this. I'm going to start this off by saying if you think your fish has a fungus, you may want to hit it with these antibiotics I'm going to mention as well because it could be columnaris. And if you feel really strongly that you do have columnaris and it's in your community tank, uh, the bunch of the uh, articles that I read highly recommended that you treat your whole tank because it can pass on from one to another and is it worth losing your whole tank or is it are you willing to just treat the one in a quarantine tank so if you see that these fish have these um, signs of columnaris um, the couple meds that they definitely said that would hit the bacteria are furan 2 and canaplex so if you feel like you are having an issue with columnaris in your last batches from your your supplier then maybe it's time to quarantine with canaplex before it goes into your big tank and they also said that internal so the non-visible strains of the bacteria can be affected by medicating the fish food in canaplex and actually one of the articles that I read said that they brought some fish back from the edge uh, after having medicated with canaplex food so with a food with canaplex in it so that way they're getting that antibiotic not just externally they're getting it internally and that's really important um, some things that were mentioned so much that I feel like I have to say something is um, they said they used a copper sulfate bath and it's kind of old school But I highly recommend you doing your own research on that But they people said that it works So if you feel confident in doing a copper sulfate bath with your fish, then I'd say go for it and um, the other um, Couple things that they talked about was doing a salt bath and treatment like the same that you would do for ick again Do your own research on the dosing. It's kind of like what you feel is right and then um, a big thing is that these bacteria thrive above 70 to 75 degrees. 
So it's kind of like I grow bacteria for my job and I have to grow them at uh, body temperature, so at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, but if they aren't living at that temperature, then they don't, they're not as fast and as productive. So this is the same thing. So if you have water that is above 77 or 75, it was kind of mixed between the different articles. Um, they said that you could have a very virulent strain of columnaris and really it's going to pass through your tank very quickly and you're not going to really have a chance to treat it. So if you feel like you have this, if this disease, it was often said that you immediately lower your temperature below 75. So just something that definitely is important to uh, keep uh, an eye on when you're looking at your fish. And they also said that a high bio load can also encourage this bacteria to grow. So clean water is also really important. So that's kind of leading us in the preventative care, which I'm really just going to say is you're low, keeping a lower temperature in your fish tank if you can. I know some fish can't really deal with that. Um, uh, making sure that your water's clean and you're often doing water changes and regular maintenance and Q quarantine QT quarantine your fish with the with the meds is definitely something that I highly recommend I know we don't want to quarantine the fish we want to put them into our beautiful display tank and it's going to be great but is it worth killing everything else in your tank you know it's just one of those things that you have to learn and make a judgment call on and you may say Katie I did the Furan too and it didn't work well then I would recommend doing the Canaplex or trying something else doing your own research because some one of the things that I learned with doing aquariums is that it's all about your own experience a lot of times people will tell you eight different things and you have to figure out which one is the right one and that just comes with trying it and writing it down on your fish notebook and really um, just moving forward and learning from every experience and it sucks when stuff doesn't go right and that's the worst part of being an aquarium hobbyist but doing those things will really help you learn and pass off knowledge to other people in the future and I hope I've never had columnera so I really hope that this can help you guys and um, thank you for everyone that gave me their input and thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and I really appreciate you watching and I hope you have a wonderful day and happy fish tanks. Bye.